And of course, Barbara is now going to open up uh, one of those verses and chapters and words to us now. Thank you, Barbara. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. But as you continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great, thank you, uh, Barbara, for reading that for us. Um, so as we uh, come to listen to God's word and hear about God's word, uh, let's just pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made and for this moment that you have given us to learn from your scripture. Uh, and Lord, I pray that as we learn about scripture, uh, Lord, may we develop this rhythm uh, in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if I was to um, ask for a show of hands on this, I, I won't do just to just to save you from the person you're sat next to. But um, do you have someone in your life who kind of you feel like they kind of nag you a little bit? Like at times that they'll not nag you on something. OK, the, there's a, there's some hands up there who. But. Yeah, well, I think, to be honest, we've all probably got one or two people in our lives who who nag us about different things. And, and to be honest, I, I love my mum. I love her so much. But despite how much older and wiser I am getting, there are those same things she will always nag me about or remind me about. Like, even when I leave the house, I still get asked the question, have you got a tissue? Have you got your keys? Have you got your phone? It still happens. But most importantly, this is, this is the favourite, is when we're eating tea, Andrew, you need to learn to slow down when you're eating. You need to chew your food properly. And so... With that in mind, the title of today's message is Chew Your Food. Chew Your Food. And so that's what we're going to explore as we look at the Bible. And as we think about this rhythm of reading scripture, uh, what I want to do today is I want to show you why you should read scripture, but also how to connect with it. And I'm just going to give you an example from how I connect with scripture just to hopefully help you. So first of all, why read scripture? Well, I think there's three reasons or three key reasons why we should read scripture. And it's conversation, inspiration, and preparation. Conversation, inspiration, and preparation. Anyone who was on uh, the well-being course would have heard a brilliant quote by Pete Gregg, who said that we don't read the Bible for information, but conversation. And the reason why we read it for conversation is because the Bible is not a it's not a dead thing. In Hebrews 4.12, it says how the Bible is a living and active word. It's not dead. It's, it's alive. It's a living thing. And in the spoken word, we just listened to uh, the guy referenced John chapter one, where he speaks about how the word became flesh and how we say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You know, the Bible is God. It's alive. And so if you want to interact with God and have a conversation with God, you need to open your Bible because the Bible is God. 
okay it's alive and it's active and the thing with any conversation is any conversation requires two parties it requires interaction for it to be a conversation and that's what the bible enables you to do it enables you to have a conversation with god but it also helps you get to know god better because as i say the bible is god so therefore if you want to get to know god you need to read the bible here's a here's a question for you if um a lot of you've got kids if there was a book that came out that told you everything about your kids I'm pretty sure you'd read it because I'm sure there's, there's there's so many things that your kids maybe don't tell you or pe your closest friends just maybe don't tell you. I'm sure, like, to be honest, if there was a book that came out and it was the, the book of the future wife of Andy Monks, I would read it. I would reread it. I'd reread it and make notes and then I'd reread it and make notes about my notes. OK, like because I'd look, I'd want to know all of that stuff. And you see, one of the things is, I, I was telling you about my, my mum earlier. My, my mum, because I know my mum and I've lived with my mum my whole life, I, I understand my mum. I understand her little facial cues. I understand the look she's got when she's just thinking. I understand the look when I tell her something and she's very confused by it. I understand her, her mannerisms. And it's interesting, when, when we walk through life with people, it's... The more you understand someone, the better you can read them. But with God, it's completely different. Because with God, we have the Bible. So with people, the more you understand someone, the better you can read them. But with God, the more you read him, the better you understand him. So if you want to understand God better and get to know him better, you need to open the word because the word is him and you need to read it and read about him so just remember the more you understand someone the better you can read them but with god the more you read him the better you understand him so it's worth opening up the bible but if we move on to inspiration one of my favorite verses in the whole bible is romans 10 17 where it says how faith comes by hearing, from hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, one of the, I think one of the biggest questions that so many people have in their Christian walk is, how do I hear from God? You know, having worked with young people for a long time, I think it's the number one question that young people have is, how do I hear from God? Well, actually, there are lots of different ways in which you can hear from God. But the easiest way you can hear from God is open your Bible and start reading. Because as this scripture indicates, all scripture is God breathed or rather all scripture is inspired by God. So, you know, for something to be inspired, well, inspiration really is something being put in. It starts with nothing and then it's put in, you know like there was nothing and then God said let let there be light and there was light God is an inspirational God he, he sees things that have nothing and puts something in them he inspires them so his word is completely inspired by him and so you can have inspiration in your life ideas can come to you vision can come to you simply by opening up his word and then he can inject some inspiration into your life but also there's there's two parts to inspiration because there's inspiration and encouragement. And, and God's really been showing me the difference between the two in this last week. So inspiration is about starting with nothing and putting it in. Inspiration, is, uh, ec encouragement rather, is that there's something there that needs to be brought out. And what you see in the verse here is you see how Paul, speaking to Timothy, says this phrase. But as for you, continue in what you have learned. So he's already been inspired by scripture because he's already learned it. But now Paul's like, I'm encouraging you to continue in it. And actually, if you were to look at the original text as to what this phrase, continuing what you have learned means, you'd actually find the same phrase used to describe the word abide. And of course, last week, Sarah spoke to us all about abiding. This whole series really is about abiding in God and, and getting to know him better so that you can be 
more of who he wants you to be and you can be encouraged to step into those things that he wants you to step into. And then finally, for the why, there's this thing of preparation. Now, preparation really, uh, there's lots of things going on in this text before where our reading was from and after where our, what our reading said. Now, here's some of the reasons why you, you want to be prepared in life, okay? Especially as a Christian. Before these readings, Paul speaks about persecution. So you want to be reading, and then he says that phrase, so you can continue in what you've learned. You want to keep reading the Bible because there's going to come times in life when you're going to face really big opposition. You're going to face really big struggles. So you want to hold tight to the word so you can actually continue to press through those difficult seasons. But not only that, then during a uh, these verses it speaks about how you can be equipped for every good work in other words God wants you to reach your full God-given potential God has got a massive dream for your life and God wants you to reach that dream but in order to get to that dream actually it's going to be reading scripture and tapping into scripture that's going to help you get there because it's all useful and all helpful and can help change you and mold you and create you to be the person you need to be to achieve the things that God has called you to do. And then after this verse, Paul then uses this phrase to Timothy, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Now that preaching the word, you could even change that word to the word vocation. You know, whatever your vocation is, be prepared in season and out of season, you know. And so, so no matter what is going on in the world and no matter what's going on around you, by continuing to abide in Jesus and hearing from his word and staying close to him, by doing that, you will be able to sustain and be equipped to do every good work in season and out of season. So it's well worth Read in scripture because you can have conversation with God, which is awesome. You can be inspired by him and you can be prepared for anything that you will face. And in doing that, you kind of go on a, on a journey from infancy to maturity. You know, that's what that's what Paul says to Tim over here. To, you go from being an infant and then you gain wisdom, you gain insight through reading. So as you do that, you're prepared for everything God has for you. But how do you do that? Well, for me, the how is based on two really important things. And it's attention and meditation. Attention and meditation. Now, I think there's been a, a thing within the Christian world for a long time that says how you, sh you should always read your Bible at the start of the day. Okay. And, and I understand that. And I totally believe in the fact of if you win the morning, you'll win the day. Like, I totally believe that. But what I think with scripture, the best thing we can do with scripture is not just to automatically read it at the start of the day, but read it when it can get your most attention. In fact, for me, I read the Bible at the end of the day. And the reason I read it at the end of the day is because that's when I can give it my fullest attention. Like if you ever had a conversation with someone, you know, maybe you've gone out for dinner with somebody, you're having a really nice time and that person across the way from you is on their phone or like, you know, someone's trying to speak to you, but they're like, they're facing a different way. They're in a different zone. They haven't got full attention on your conversation. It's not, it's not the most fruitful conversation, is it? The most fruitful conversations require your most attention. And so with the Bible, we need to read the Bible when we can give it our most attention, because the better your attention, the higher your retention. The better your attention, the higher your retention. You know, so the more attention you give to something, the more you can retain, the more you can take in, the more you can keep hold of. OK, so we need to be able to give it our most attention. And the thing is, if we give it our most attention... It means that we can produce meditation on it much easier. Now, I'm just going to read um, Psalm 1 to you, or just a couple of verses in Psalm 1, because there's something really important for us to tap into on meditating on Scripture from this. 
So this is what Psalm uh, 1, verses 1 to 3 says. It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, or the word of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. You know, that links straight back to what we were talking about before. You know, God's got a real plan for your life and God wants you to reach your full God given potential and achieve the dream for your life. Well, by sticking close to his word and meditating on his word, you will always remain fruitful in season and out of season there's always a fruitfulness on your life but in this verse the word that word meditate uh, the same word can also means to chew okay to chew this brings back my title of chew your food okay the word of god is made to be chewed okay i don't know if you've ever seen uh, the film uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, depending on which version of the film that you watched. OK, but there's a character in this film called Violet and Violet has got a world. She is the world champion at chewing gum. I mean, what an unbelievable thing that would be. She's got trophies for chewing. Gum. And what you see in this character, right, is she chews on her gum. And then watch this. She takes the gum out, sticks it behind her ear. Walks about her day and then a bit later on, picks the gum out behind her ear and starts chewing again. And that is what we need to do with God's word is we need to pick it up, start chewing on it. And as the day goes on and as the night goes on, we need to keep picking it up and keep chewing on it because you can't digest something without chewing on something. It's the only way. So if you want to fully get God's word into your system. You've got to be able to, to chew on it, okay? And the great thing with God's word is, you know, Psalm 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, in, in, in school, I'm going to confess something to you now. In school, in, uh, when I was I'm probably about in year nine, we had these competitions in our class of who could last the longest chewing gum in class without the teacher noticing okay we'd sometimes this but the one thing that i always noticed is when you're chewing gum you chew gum and after about a minute the taste has gone like and then you're just left with this dry piece of mush in your mouth that's completely tasteless okay but the beauty of god's word is that the taste never runs out so as we keep chewing it's as fresh as when we first put it in our mouth and it tastes just as good the whole time. And so just to finish off, I'm just going to show you how, how I do this uh, with the hope that there's different way. I mean, we're all different, you know, we will connect with scripture differently. This is just how I do it. Uh, and I hope that my example of how I do it will help you to, to do it with yourself. And um, so every year, what I do is I have um, a word for every year that I'm really trying to focus on and I'm really trying to improve in. And so this for 2021, my word is communication. So I'm trying to become a better communicator. I'm trying to look at different avenues of communicating. That's why I've done more spoken words. I've tried more poetry. I'm trying different artistic things. I'm trying to tr improve my communication in lots of different ways. And so we're reading the Bible. Um, I, with <laughs> reading the Bible, what I do is um, I follow a Bible reading plan called the Robert Murray McShane Bible Plan. And what this Bible plan does is you read four chapters of the Bible a day, and it's from four different books of the Bible. And what you do is you end up going in the whole year, you go through the Old Testament once, but then you go through the Psalms twice and the New Testament twice in the year okay and so what i'm doing is when i read my four chapters is one of the uh, one of the books of those four i write a talk on a different book uh, a different chapter each day so this morning i think i was writing a book all yesterday i wrote a talk on numbers chapter eight 
Never done that before. Never even really studied Numbers Chapter 8 before. So yesterday I did a talk on Numbers Chapter and I've done talks on all... So, so far this year, I think I've probably written about 120 different talks and I've not spoke any of them. But the idea is that it's helping me to chew on God's word better. Because when you look at something with the idea that you're going to talk about it, it just makes you reflect on it in a much deeper way. So that just helps me to, chew. and your way might be different, you know, it might be simply to read one verse and to sit with it for an hour and sit with it over a cup of tea. It might be to take a verse and go out and walk with it and to think about it and process it. One of the things when I was younger, I used to love reading a couple of verses uh, in the Bible and then go swimming because when you're swimming and your head's submerged, you can't be distracted by anything because there's no noise under the water. And it used to help me just concentrate and to chew and to meditate. So whatever your way is, you know, find that way for yourself. But the one thing I want you to take away from today is that if you're going to reach the fullness that God has for you, if you're going to reach your full potential, achieve your calling, reach your purpose, see your vocation be in its fullest, it's only by opening scripture and tapping into God's word that you're going to be able to achieve that. So I hope, so that is my number one takeaway from today. So let's just pray, everyone. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that we can have conversation with you through it. I thank you that it can bring inspiration to us at any moment. The Lord, it gives us preparation for the good seasons and the bad ones. And Lord, I pray that today we would be able to give your word the full attention that it needs, that, Lord, we would be able to find a space for meditation upon it. And that, Lord, as we chew on your word, Lord, would we taste its goodness? And, Lord, would it be useful to us in every season so that whatever the season, whether it's in season or out of season, we can reach that fullness and that fullness of purpose that you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen.